So how far did we get? We did, did we do? We did long division, right? We, yeah. but we didn't do synthetic. Right. Okay. And you was gonna wait until next week. Yeah, we'll we'll start on synthetic division, and uh, we'll actually start on it with this problem. Okay. So synthetic division is just a way of doing long division without having to write everything out, basically. We're not going to write out all of the uh, variables, all the exponents and everything. It's just a concise, more uh, clean way of doing long division. Okay? And the way we do that is we think about writing, and we talked about, I don't know if we explained that uh, when we divide, the thing that we're dividing into is called the dividend. The thing that's being divided uh, by is the divisor. D divisor. That don't look right, but I don't care because this is math class, not English class. Divisor. Okay, so we can think of this divisor if it's in the form of x minus c, which just means x plus or minus a number. Okay, then we can do synthetic division. All right. Now, when I say x minus c, this is just like when we did uh, parabolas, when we did circles, x minus h, y minus k. If I look at that, what do I have to do to that number? I had to change the sign, right, to get the number. When I was looking for h and k, I had to change the, the sign, right? Same deal here. If I'm looking at x minus 3, to find c, I'm going to have to change the sign because it's x minus c. So if x minus 3, I'm looking for c, what is c? c is 3, okay, not minus 3, it's 3. If I had x plus 5, what would c be? c would be negative 5, okay? It's real important that we recognize that c is always going to be the opposite sign, okay? If I'm given c, and I want to write that, I just change it over to the opposite sign. So if I was given c equals 3, I would say that's x minus 3. Or if I was given c equals negative 2, I would say that's x plus 2. Because it's always x minus c, whatever c is. Okay? So that being said, we're always going to write our synthetic division a specific way. We're always going to say c we got a big box and then we write our polynomial up here okay we do our coefficients of our polynomial and we do it in a top row with enough space underneath that to do another row of numbers okay so for this problem we do a big box we always put c on the outside so what is c for this problem c is three so three comes out here and we put inside of our box the coefficients of our descending order polynomial. What are our descending order coefficients? Two, two. Negative. negative three, negative, three. negative eleven, seven. and seven. Okay. Now, if you ever happen to be missing terms in terms of like you've got x cubed, x squared, x to the first, and then the constant. If you were missing, say, an x squared, you would still have to represent, just like we did with long division, you put that zero in there as the coefficient for that term. You always have to have every possible degree represented. Okay? We'll see that in just a second when we do the next problem. So to do synthetic division, step one, is to bring down the first coefficient. So we just bring that 2 down and put it underneath the box. Step 2 is to bounce and multiply. What I mean by that is with C, I bounce the 3 times the 2 and multiply it and put it 
as the next number. So 3 times 2 gives me 6. Okay? So you see this is really similar to what we did with our long division where we multiplied the top by the divisor and went to the bottom. But now we're doing it bottom and going up. Okay? Step 3 is to add down. So we come down and what's negative 3 plus 6? 3. Okay. Rinse and repeat. So we just keep doing that over and over again until we're done. So we're going to bounce. 3 times 3 gives us what? 9. And then we add down. What's negative 11 plus 9? Negative 2. 3 times negative 2? Negative 6. 7 minus 6? 1. Okay. Now, all of these are the coefficients of our answer. The question is, well, okay, it's coefficients to what? Well, if our divide or our dividend was degree 3, our answer will always be one less degree. Okay? So if we started with a degree 3 polynomial, our answer will be a degree 2 polynomial. So our answer is always one degree less than the dividend. Okay? So since our dividend was x cubed, this is going to be 2x squared. This is a positive 3, so plus 3x minus 2. And then this last number is the remainder. So how did we handle the remainder before? With long division? We just did 1 over the divisor, right? 1 over the divisor is x minus 3. So just like with long division, you put the remainder over the divisor. And if you've got your notes from last week, you'll see we already did this problem. This was the problem we did long division. It's the same answer. Which, God help us, it better be the same answer. I hate to do two problems different ways and get two different answers. I did that earlier today in a trig class, and I got two different answers, and it was because I wrote the formula down wrong, but it was my fault. It wasn't math's fault. Wait, I know you probably just said this. Mm -hmm. uh, class one, whenever it's like one over x minus three, mm -hmm. you just pull it back in when you find the original divisor. Yes, it's always the remainder over the divisor. Mm -hmm. Little note. Put remainder over divisor. And if it's positive, you'll add it. If it's negative, you'll subtract it. Okay? Any questions on that problem? We'll do another one and see how it works when we're missing a term. All right, so we've got x cubed minus 7x minus 6, and we're dividing by x plus 2. Okay, so what's c going to be? Negative 2. c is negative 2. Now, this is already in descending order, but notice that it's missing the x squared term. So we're going to have to put a 0 in for that x squared term. So what are my coefficients going to be? 1, 0, negative 7, negative 6. Okay, this is going to be, when you first start doing that, that's going to be, it's going to happen that you get this problem of forgetting to put those uh, blank spaces, those filler spots in. But we have to have that in there if we want all of our spots to line up correctly. So step one, bring down the one. Step two, bounce and multiply. So negative two times one, negative two. 
So step three, add down, we get negative two. Now we're going to repeat, bounce, positive four, add, negative three, bounce, positive six, add zero. Well, that's nice, we get no remainder, so that's an even one. So what's our answer going to be? If we decrease our exponent by one, this is going to be what? x squared minus 2x minus 3. Most people do find this a little bit easier than long division. If no other reason, then it saves a little space. It definitely doesn't take as long to write. But the issue with this is we really have to have x plus 2 x minus 3. You've got to have x. Whereas with long division, you don't. Long division, I can have 5x minus 7. And I can do it. It's a little bit more challenging, but I can do it. With this, I can do it with 5x minus 7 too. I just have to solve for c, which is going to wind up being a fraction. Okay? So we can only do this whenever it's an x plus minus 1. Yes. Well, you can do it. Like I said, you can do it with a fraction, but you want to see what it looks like? Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Now, we have something called the remainder theorem which says that if we have a polynomial function and it, you divide it by x minus c, then whatever the remainder is, that's what you would get if you plugged c into the original equation. Okay? So, in this equation, I divided this function by x plus 2. Right? c was negative 2. That means my remainder, which is 0, is what would happen if I plugged negative 2 into my function. Okay? We can test this. What's negative 2 cubed? Negative 8. What's negative 7 times negative 2? Positive 14 minus 6. What's negative 8 plus 14 minus 6? 0. And that's what the remainder theorem is. Now, how we use the remainder theorem is if we've got this really big, long polynomial and we say, what is f of 3? Well, instead of doing plugging in 3 into the function, I can just do synthetic division on it and use 3 as my C. And then bounce, multiply, add. Bounce, multiply, add. Bounce, multiply, do this whole thing. Find my remainder. My remainder will be F of 3. Okay? Let's see how that plays out. Here's my function. This is a fairly small one. I could do this by hand without having to do the remainder theorem, but it's small enough that we can test it as well. So if I want to find negative 4, I'm going to use negative 4 as C, and whatever my remainder is should be f of negative 4. Okay? Do you all understand what I'm saying? That the remainder, when I plug in negative 4, will be f of negative 4. Okay? So negative 4, this is already in descending order. It already has all the terms. 3, 4, negative 5, 3. Okay? So we do bring down. Multiply. Negative 12. Add. Negative 8. Multiply. Add. 27. Multiply. Mm -hmm. 108. And then add. Negative 105. 
Okay, so that means f of negative 4 should be negative 105. So if I plug negative 4 in as x, I should get negative 105. And we can test this. Let's test it by plugging in negative 4. So, negative 4 cubed is negative 64. Negative 4 squared is positive 16. 3 times negative 64 plus 12 was 192 negative plus 64 plus 20 plus 3. 64, 23, negative 192 plus 87. negative 105. So this is really cool feature that tends to be more useful the higher power this is. The longer this polynomial is, the harder it becomes to plug in a value and get a number without a calculator, of course. I mean, if you've got a calculator, who cares? I'll just do it all day. But by hand, it tends to be easier to do synthetic division. Okay? Any questions about the remainder theorem and how to use it? It's pretty straightforward. All right, the last thing that we're going to do, unfortunately, today, because after this we're going to have to go, because I have a meeting to go to, and I'm sorry for that. And we'll do, uh, we'll do the uh, variation on uh, Tuesday. Factor theorem. Do what? Yes. Although I'll open up the test to be taken whenever you want to take it next week. But it, yeah, it won't be due till actually the second. You can take it any time up through Friday. Just remember that the testing center closes at 11 on Friday, so I mean you'd have to be there by 10 o'clock to take it. So most people would probably take it by Thursday. Okay. Uh, Factor theorem says if we've got a polynomial, if C is a factor of polynomial, then I can factor that, you know, I can do the synthetic division on it, and it'll give me a new polynomial that I can factor, okay? That's not what this says, but that's what it is. So you're given a polynomial. You're given a zero of that polynomial. You say, this number is a zero. If I take that number and use synthetic division on it and use that as C, then I'll get a new equation that will also be equal to zero, okay? And I can solve that equation however I know how to solve it. Generally we do this when we have got like a cubic equation that's a third power and we're given one of the roots so that we can solve it down to a quadratic. And then once it's a quadratic, I know how to solve a quadratic, right? I use a quadratic equation or a factor it, okay? So it looks like this. Say you've got 15x cubed plus 14x squared minus 3x minus 2 equals 0. And you're given that negative 1 is a 0. That means negative 1 is a root. So I can plug in negative 1 as C, and I'll use that, and it should give me no remainder because it should be a perfect root. So if I use synthetic division on it, 15, 14, negative 3, negative 2. Once I do this, I should get a quadratic equation, right? Because I started with a cube, I should go down to a square. So what do we get? 15, 15 times negative 1, negative 1, positive 1, negative 2, positive 2, no remainder. So this gives us 15x squared minus x minus 2. And it's equal to 0 still. Because all I did was pull out one of the factors. OK? So now I can solve this by any method I deem appropriate. I can factor it. I can use quadratic equation on it. Which method do we want to do? Can we factor it? 
Does anybody know how to factor it? Can we use sorcery? Something? Who here remembers how to factor? <laughs> Luckily, I'll be doing a series of factoring videos tomorrow uh, and posting them in Blackboard, okay? So I'm going to do factoring videos on basic factoring when you have no leading term, factoring videos on AC method and amazing method for those who know how to do amazing, uh, uh, AC for those who don't, factoring by grouping, which will be in uh, AC method, and uh, difference of squares, difference in sum of cubes. So I'll have videos up for all of those hopefully by tomorrow evening, okay? So we'll need a refresher. Everybody needs a refresher on factoring. Everyone always needs a refresher on factoring. So we'll get that up. Here, we can do AC method on it if we want to. But remember, what always works? Quadratic formula always works. Regardless of whether you can factor or not, quadratic formula always works. So let's do quadratic formula on it, because I know that works. So what is the quadratic formula? What now? No, that's Pythagorean theorem. Minus, very close. All over to A. Very good. All right. So, what is A? 15. What is B? And what is C? Negative 2. So, this is going to be negative negative 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 1 squared minus 4 times 15 times negative 2 all over 2 times 15. So 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 plus uh, 120 over 30. So that gives us 1 plus or minus the square root of 121 over 30 which is 1 plus or minus 11 over 30. If I'm going too fast, slow me down. So 1 plus 11 gives us 12 over 30. 1 minus 11 gives us negative 10 over 30. Right, it's two different answers. And then we simplify those down. This becomes two-fifths, this becomes negative one-third. So there are other two solutions. So x equals negative one, which was one of the answers that we were given, two-fifths, and negative one-third. And those would be the zeros of that equation, or the x-intercepts. If we wanted to graph that, could we? Everyone shake their head yes, we could do that. Because we know the end behavior, right? It's cubic, it's positive, so it's falling to the left, rising to the right. We've got three x-intercepts, so we should be able to cross, 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 because they all have a multiplicity of one. So their odd multiplicity, it's crossing at all of those places. So we should be able to get an educated sketch of this one. Okay? Yes, ma'am? No, not in this section. This is the last of it anyway, so if you have no questions, get to working on that homework. All right? And we will see y'all on Tuesday to start on variation and when we get done variation won't take us just a few minutes and then we'll do review for the test okay